Hi guys, Mrs. A here. We are looking at solving rational inequalities. So these are like other inequalities where our solutions are going to be intervals rather than individual uh, values for the independent variable. So we're going to approach this in a similar way. First, we have this rational function greater than this rational function. We want to get uh, everything on one side so we have a zero on the other side and then we can, can just compare the new function with the x-axis so we could see when it's above or below the x-axis or greater than or less than zero. So we're going to start by subtracting this term over to the left hand side and this will give us 3x minus 8 over 2x minus 1 minus x minus 4 over x plus 1 greater than 0. So now we have these two rational expressions being subtracted here. We want to um, simplify this so that we end up with one rational expression. That means a polynomial divided by a polynomial. So we can only combine these two by subtracting them and we do that by getting a common denominator. So we want to look for the lowest common denominator here. So over on the side I'll do this. Our lowest common denominator well, if we have a 2x minus 1 in this denominator, we know we need a 2x minus 1 at least. And then if we look here, we have an x plus 1 in that denominator. So that here is our lowest common denominator in this case. So now we need to get that denominator for both of these terms. In order to do that, I need to multiply both terms by different values here to manipulate them into getting these these two factors in the denominator. So in my first term I already have a 2x minus 1. That means I need to multiply this expression by x plus 1 over x plus 1 to get the x plus 1 in the denominator. Like this. And on this term I already have the x plus 1 in the denominator so I'm going to multiply it by 2x minus 1 over 2x minus 1 and then I'll get that other factor in the denominator here. Okay, so let's see what that looks like when we multiply it out. So in the numerator here I'll have 3x minus 8 times x plus 1 and then over 2x minus 1 times x plus 1. Then minus, for this term, I have x minus 4 times 2x minus 1 over 2x minus 1 times x plus 1. And now you see that my denominators are the same, so I can put those together and subtract the numerators to get one rational expression on this left-hand side. So I'm going to distribute these two binomials and these two binomials and I'm going to put them all over the same denominator here. So let's do the first ones. I'll get 3x squared plus 3x minus 8x minus 8. And then I'm going to distribute these two binomials as well, but keep in mind that I do have a negative there, so I need to distribute the negative in at the same time. So I'll do it all at once. So you see I'll get x times 2x is 2x squared, but then with the minus gives us minus 2x squared. So if I do that for all the terms, I'll get uh, plus x plus 8x and minus 4. And then in our denominator, we have the 2x minus 1 times the x plus 1 there. And this is still greater than 0. Okay, so now we want to combine all of the like terms in the numerator, and that's going to give us a trinomial. So I'll highlight all of the like terms to help you out here. Here I'll have an x squared term and an x squared term, so these go together. And then we have an x term, an x term, an x term, and an x term, and then a constant and a constant. So we'll put all of those together. So when we do this, we're going to end up with, in the numerator, x squared plus 4x minus 12. 
and this is still over the same denominator like this. Great, so this is a simple trinomial in the numerator. If I can factor it, I will, instead of using the quadratic formula. So here my product is negative 12, and my sum is positive 4. Uh, our two numbers here then are going to be positive 6 and negative 2. So I could factor that numerator and I'll get x plus 6 times x minus 2 over 2x minus 1 times x plus 1 greater than 0. So now we've simplified it to one rational expression on one side and both the numerator and the denominator are factored which are useful because now we're going to determine our asymptotes and our zeros for this rational function. So first let's do the vertical asymptotes. Those come from the restrictions on the denominator. So here, uh, x can't be positive one half, so I have a vertical asymptote at one half. And from this factor, x can't be negative one, so I have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative one. Now let's look at the zeros. So those are our x-intercepts for this function. They come from the numerator if we were to set it equal to zero. And so from this factor, we get a zero of negative six. And from this factor, we get a zero of positive two. So these four x values now are what determine our intervals in our interval chart when we are uh, determining if, the fu if this function here is above the x-axis. So I'm going to plot those four numbers onto a number line because I do know that that's easier for some people to um, visualize the intervals that we have to put into our chart. So I'll start with the leftmost number, so that negative 6 will be on the number line first and then we will have negative one somewhere here and the next number is one half so let's say it's here and then our last number is positive two somewhere here so now you can see based on the number line that the intervals we're going to ha have will be when it, x is less than negative six when x is between negative six and negative one when x is between negative 1 and 1 half, when x is between 1 half and positive 2, and then when x is greater than positive 2. So we end up with five intervals here based on those four uh, x values that uh, divide up the function. So I'm going to fill out my interval chart now based on these intervals. So I'll put them here. We said when x was less than negative six, and I'm using less than, of course, because in the original problem, our inequality was a greater than without the equal sign on it. If it had an equal sign on it, then we would put equals where the x values were zeros, but we can't put an equal sign where the x values come from asymptotes because we know that those are restrictions. So I have x less than negative 6. I have um, x between negative 6 and negative 1. Uh, x between negative 1 and 1 half. x between 1 half and 2. And x greater than 2. So those are all five of our intervals. And now I'm going to list in the left-hand column of my chart these uh, four factors from the expression that we simplified here on the left hand side and then that way I can look at just the signs from each factor and then know if the function itself is positive or negative based on the signs of each four of those factors. Okay so first I'm going to pick an x value for e each interval. It doesn't matter which x value you pick as long as it's a value that's between, in between the interval. I always like to choose numbers that I think are going to be easier to do in my head. So these are the numbers that I'm going to pick for each interval. And three there. Okay, so let's list all of the factors that were in that simplified function. And those were 
see if I can get them in here, x plus 6, x minus 2, 2x minus 1, and x plus 1. And then finally, we're going to look at the sign of the expression itself. Okay, so now, if I plug in the negative 7 into this factor, I'm going to have a negative number. If I put negative 7 into this factor, I'll have a negative number. If I put negative 7 here, I'll have a negative number. And if I put negative 7 here, I'll have a negative number. So you see, if I multiply these two together and then divide by the product of these two, I end up with a positive number for the whole expression that was in that inequality that we simplified to. So we'll do it again for negative 2. If I plug it in here, I'm going to get a positive number, then a negative, then a negative, and a negative here. So a positive with a negative and a negative and a negative gives us a negative value. I'll do it again for each one of these x values. So when I plug in 0 here, I get a positive value, a negative value, a negative value, and a positive value. So here, two negatives will give us a positive value. With our 1, if I plug it in here, I get a positive, a negative, a positive, and a positive. So these four together will give me a negative value. And finally, when x is 3, if I plug it in here, I'll get a positive, a positive, a positive, and a positive value. So all together, my function is positive. Okay, so now we need to figure out which values satisfy the inequality. Remember that the inequality asked for when the function is greater than zero, meaning when is this function above the x-axis, or positive. So in my chart, we're looking for the values of f at x that are positive. So I have one here. I have one here, and I have one here. So I can conclude now my solutions for the original inequality are when x is less than negative 6, when x is between negative 1 and 1 half, and when x is greater than 2. Thanks for watching. This is A Loves Math.